Three IRL use cases for Python and HTMX. This is not sponsored. <laughs> Good. I'm not sure who... Uh, I got sponsored by Big Python. <laughs> I got sponsored by HTMX. Okay. You think the horse... The, the, the shit-posting horse, horse head language is going to be sponsoring anybody? <laughs> Uh, there is nothing HMX does that you couldn't do in another way, but HMX pairs wonderfully with traditional server-side frameworks and gives you clean, correct results quite fast. You won't get Candy Crush bling level, oop, I'm gonna turn this down, with it, but you will get something practical, which is regularly all I want, or all I need. Yeah. This is a fair statement. Fair statement. I added it to a quick and dirty dev tool so that I could, uh, so I could be dynamic with little cost. I sparkled it on a personal project. <laughs> I want to know about sparkling. How does one, how does one sparkle, sparkle it on uh, for a time management tool to force it to send standard requests? And I, uh, and I sold it to my not so good coder friend to make the team happier. Can, can we just take a moment and all recognize that we all have the not so good coder friend, but we all love our not so good coder friend. English is a second language confirmed. Yep. That's me. Yeah. 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 Hey, hi, it's me. Yeah, you know, we all love, we all love you. Uh, m mine personally is Nightshade Dude. Nightshade Dude, I really appreciate you, Nightshade Dude. Uh, I know that y you're a great person, but I would probably recommend um, uh, HTMX to you too. Also, great mod. Nightshade Dude, great mod. If at this point you're too afraid to ask, beyond a few months of hype and this hilarious Twitter account, by the way, the, the account is hilarious, HTMX has proven to be a valuable addition to my toolbox, but I read again and again people wondering what use case would you find that it couldn't be done a different way? What the heck are those people laughing at Grug memes for, uh, Grug memes using that stuff for? First, let's make it clear things up. There is nothing HTMX does that couldn't, uh, that you couldn't do in another way. It's not HTMX versus, it's HTMX also. This is a fair statement. This is actually a really good statement, which which is, I mean, you can build anything in React. You can build the same things in Svelte, and you can pretty much build the same things in HTMX. As far as I can tell, there's no hurdle that I have seen yet that can't be done. Uh, like, you like you wouldn't really use React probably for a Maps app, for the Google Maps app. I mean, you could. You could use it for all the Chrome, but you could also use HTMX for all the Chrome and then have the intense web component being the map itself or however you want to create that map, right? Like, there's no application that somehow too complicated or not complicated enough, right? Uh, you add the tool to the ones you uh, can use depending on the situation. Yes, it's funny to make jokes on obese client stacks, complicated build workflows, and so on. But of course, we use them too. That's why it cracks us up. Oh, while I'm a Python expert, I'm very comfortable with JavaScript, and I use React and Vue for my clients. What's more, if you started web dev after 2015, it is hard to see how to do a site without anything other than client-side frameworks. This is a great observation, by the way. I absolutely love this observation, which is if you're not used to doing, if, if you've only ever lived in a world of frameworks or meta frameworks, it's really hard to see that that's not the only way around. It's kind of like picking up functional programming the first time. There's something about doing functional programming that feels really confusing. Like, I'm great with recursion. Not a problem. I just don't reach for it as a way to solve all my problems. And so when I start having to do that all of a sudden, it changes, like, my perspective quite a bit. And now I have to think in a much different way than I used to think, right? And so I think it's the same thing with HTMX is that when you're used to object-oriented getting tossed into a functional programming language would be hard. It's a familiarity issue more than anything else because there's a way you solve problems that cannot be connected, right? Like the way you do it in React cannot be done in HTMX. And if you try to make it that way, which you can, you can actually use React in HTMX. It just gets all effed up. Not the CSS tool, I mean sassy. HTMX is a good tech if you know how to wield it. It's not going to change the destiny of humanity forever. It's, it does require the coder to think like PHP 3 uh, is a thing again, but it has a lot of good, good things going for it. Sick bird, man. Mostly it keeps um, the simple things simple. That's pretty nice. It does. This is a great thing. And most things you do, I'm going to throw this out there, web devs, almost everything you do is simple. You make it complicated. I'm sorry. I, 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 know, I know this hurts. I know you don't want to hear it. But most things are simple. We've just made them really complicated. And some complicated things we've made really simple. So, you know, there's a trade-off. I would say that web dev is in a much different area. It's hard for me to call it simpler, but it's hard for me to call it more complicated.
It's different. There's a lot of niceties and there's a lot of horribles. Uh, anyways, about the use cases. Before we start with the use cases again, I must insist there is nothing in those that could be made uh, in another way. You may think, oh, but I would have just, yeah, and you'd probably be right. It's not about the best way. It, is, it never is in engineering. It's all about uh, what was right for me and my context. Uh, while reading them, I, I mean, I mostly agree with this statement, but at some point it does make a difference. You know, I, I've gone to some recent websites that are selling like a very simple tool and to load the main page is 350 KB of gzipped JavaScript, right? Like that's a lot for a simple tool. It was literally a login and some payment things and it was pretty and it was 350 KB gzipped, right? That's like megabytes of JavaScript code that becomes tens of megabytes of JavaScript, you know what I mean? And so it is a little bit surprising, right? Whereas like you could get an entire thing sent down, you could get the same thing with the same functionality sent down via HTMX in 40 KB, 30 K, 20 KB. It's just different and it, it loads differently and it feels different to the end user. And so there is a point in which going all in on these big tools can actually have adverse effects, especially on phones. Not everybody's gonna be sitting around with the, I have the latest Pixel. Some people, some people are dumb enough to spend $1,700 on a phone. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Not going to do it. Even if Netflix could buy it for me, I'm still not doing it. They, they bought this one for me. Uh, anyways, use case one, a quick and dirty dev tool. Uh, working for a main client, we started to have quite the sized core lib dedicated to tricky calculations. One of my colleagues told me it would be nice if on the top of the unit test, we could have a UI with all the params so that an intern could play Chaos Monkey on it and see what uh, she finds. Since they already had fast API in their requirements files, a web UI made sense. But I started to think that if I created a new endpoint for this, then I needed to make the whole logic in JS, which means adding JS to the project that has been a pure headless Python core. It seemed unnecessary. So I just went with regular HTML form plus table with a Jinja template. It's that uh, it's the, it's simple, fast to make. And as a bonus, I could make the form emit a get request so that the intern could send uh, us the URL and we could just copy and paste it into a uh, or to replicate any bug on our side. That's nice, I like that. It was easy to code, uncomplicated. Nice, I agree. At some point though, the intern was annoyed. Uh, she had to click the button to see the new results. She was used to apps that were automatically updating with her phone after all. Okay, fair. A uh, bit of JS and Viola. Add event and listener submits the form on change and we're happy. But again, the intern was not pleased. Changing one field would uh, reload the page but dismiss her focus on the inputs. Okay, I was not gonna do the full collection of the fields, why are you guys all saying that? Why are you guys, am I just saying it wrong? We are now a musicians, we're musicians. Just, it, just accept the musician-ness, okay? Not to mention, it would seem crafting the URL manually to push it into the history, especially given the delta of money the client spent on the intern versus me. So as a good lazy boy, I fired HTMX. The form now makes an invisible get request on the submit, fetches a very same page, extracts the table, replaces the old one, and updates the URL dynamically. All of that for typing three lines of code. Dude, HX select is so good. Look at this, I knew it, HX select, oh. Mwah! Mwah! Dude, I love HX Select. Dude, you can also just go boost. You can boost it if you're fine replacing everything, but if you don't want to lose anything in the forums and you want to reload the entire page and just have it perfectly deep linked so you literally never have to think about anything, this totally works. This grabs the table, the first ta the highest parent table out of the response. It targets the current, t the, the whatever the, the table is that it finds. It does the get request on itself, it replaces the URL with itself, and it triggers on change, and it sw swaps the outer HTML of the table, so the table replaces the table. Like, dude, this is sweet. This is exactly it, that's all you need. As a bonus, I said goodbye uh, to my lone ad event listener. Roses are red, my client is happy, now I can play Baldur's Gate 3. That was a beautiful poem. I'm, gonna, I'm literally gonna try that out on my wife tonight, see if I can get lucky, because I think that that is obviously the poem of the century. Uh, I started a new habit. Anytime I spent playing games or watching TV shows, I had to spend an equivalent time being physically active. What a great, the more I think about this, this is great. What a great kind of requirement for yourself. 
Given uh, given I practice uh, some sports almost every day uh, that mostly result in less screen time or me being too exhausted to go grab a drink with my friends. But tracking this is annoying. So I made uh, what all good devs would do. I spent hours writing an app to save myself a few seconds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, since it's just for me, I have zero incentive to spend a lot of time making a killer UI. But one, let's see, one button to consume a potato time. One button to top uh, to top top it up that's not rocket science and apart from a few lines of alpine js to make a timer which appears wonderfully with htmx i could go full server side and get this this is wonderful you i mean yeah you can you could totally have the timer you don't even need the timer for with alpine jx uh, or alpine js you literally could just use a the world's simplest web component this is like the world's simplest web component and you're done it's like five lines of javascript Look at that. That's uh, this is great. This is great right here. Everything was working fine, but I had to send a post request for everything, and that bothered me. It can uh, it's completely pedantic, but having actions in my URLs instead of uh, using the correct HTTP verbs just doesn't feel right. Uh, did I need HTMX? No, it worked. Did I want HTMX? Yeah. <laughs> I I like I like this guy. I like I like this guy. This guy is fantastic. Uh, button, button, uh, do a little put. There you go. Look at that. He's Dude, he's hitting the correct HTTP verb right here. I just want the effing put. I want to update the thing. I want to patch it. Uh, and that's it. Now I have a real uh, organic delete put request, and I, and I feel good. Plus, my Django view blocks are beautifully segregated. Use case three, working with my best nemesis. I have a very old friend, and we work uh, on side projects all the time. He is a terrible programmer, and he hates it, but, I, but he loves the results. In the same way, some people hate running but, feel, uh, but like feeling in shape. Hi. Uh, so he made some personal websites and basically uh, live off them. Okay, he clearly does not sound like a bad programmer. Just made a couple personal websites and, 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 and then made a living off of it? Oh, okay. Yeah, so he sounds terrible. He sounds like he really doesn't know what he's doing. Um, working with him is a blessing and a curse. Uh, once, uh, one, let's see, on, on one side, his code is dirty. He has refused to learn Git Basics for 10 years and just asked me every time what to do and will blindly copy-paste in a frenzy everything that comes out of Stack Overflow and ChatGPT until something works. <laughs> That is annoying. On the other hand, he's incredibly hardworking, more than I'll ever be, and has a great sense of pragmatism and a lot of experience, uh, experience with B2C customers. He keeps me grounded. We make a great team. I clean up his mess, and he keeps the project on track. Plus, it's uh, just fun to be together. It uh, feels like being 14-year-old again. Oh, I love this. There's this person named JJ Prum Prum, the Micro King, and me and him have started companies together, and also of uh, Sun Rustern, and uh, I'd also do Hanefa Tafel. Uh, those are like my, my three best buddies of my lifetime. And man, I have a potential offer to go work with two out of three of them and get paid for it, but it requires me to leave Netflix. And I, man, I've thought about that over and over again, because it's just like, I love, it would be so sweet to work with them again. You know what I mean? It would be so sweet to work with them, you know? And so now I have to think about that. I have to think about that. You know, I'm going to think about that. Let us decide. No, you guys are terrible at that. Decide based on chat. Pull. Uh, I, I abide by chat's results. I'd be able to stream the same and make YouTube videos more. Anyways, but forgot about, uh, let's see, but forget about a fancy stack. Every new project is an occasion, not to add something, but to remove something. Uh, I use Do It uh, to abstract the entire project management for him. I uh, keep finding ways to make the client side simpler and simpler for him, and he usually makes the UI. We just moved to Tailwind, and he loves it. I love Tailwind, too. It's for us stupid people. Uh, the templates are huge walls of infinite class blocks repeated by uh, ad nauseum feels fine to me but having to make an api call every time he needs some data not so much he's not comfortable with asynchronous workflows the promise api is still a vague mystery after a decade of it plus depending on the framework where to put the ajax calls don't mention hooks uh, he just came out of jquery we're really good at coming to the right decisions with very little consideration and incomplete data let us decide <laughs> So I write the client, I wrap it up in an object, and I place it in viewer react component, and we are uh, BNF again. Bacchus Noriform? Oh, best nemesis friends. That's not, okay. I thought he was talking about some sort of co a compiler. 
I was like, what am I, what am I reading here? Everything is kind of like this project. Uh, this time, no more. I just went full HTMX. He got the concept quickly, and now he is autonomous on his uh, side of the project, meaning I can focus on other things. He doesn't have to wonder at something uh, if something is mounted, uh, what is the await, or if he has to write account color, account color, or account color. No more state management outside of uh, the DB. One single routing for everything. Permission and sanity are checked once. Plus, it works with Flask, Django, or Fast API all the same. Something you can't say about sending uh, back a decent JSON. These are pretty good. There is no real conclusion. <laughs> As you've noticed, there is never a need for HTMX, but I was satisfied with the results every time I chose to use it. So, see, that's the problem about defining the word need, right? Because, I mean, technically, we don't need JavaScript. You can write that shit in assembly, right? Coding right now on Twitch is writing a web server using assembly. Do you ever really need any form of abstraction? The word need is a funny, you know, term, right? Need implies that it is a must requirement. It's like, I mean, technically, you can write all the way down to assembly. And so if something makes your life dramatically easy over, over, over and over again, I would say that you can put it into the quote-unquote needs category of programming. That's kind of how I live my life. Like if I use a tool and I absolutely love it and I can build fast and well, then that's my new tool that I, I need for working, right? Uh, so when it comes to building a simple CLI or a test application or something, I love Rust. I think it's the best, right? When it comes to web servers, I'm really starting to dig on Go. I'm really, really liking Go. I think it, it, Go and HTMX, I just, it just feels the best for me. And now I'll probably change that at some point, but right now I'm happy with it. That's kind of where I, la where I land, right? I just need electricity. Yeah. So, Go templates are beautiful. I didn't stop. Let's see. I didn't stop to use React, Vue, Axios. I didn't stop uh, using Vanilla JS or Alpine. I actually sometimes mix them with HTMX. I do not use HTMX more and more, uh, or I do use HTMX more and more because it produces fast, acceptable results. I do value the short feedback loop. Do you want to post subscribers? What a great, what a great article. So, so okay, so. My only, my only thing I really want to take away from this article, and it's just something I've seen a lot in general, is that it almost, there's kind of two worlds that exist in, in programming. There's those that, sh that absolutely re just, just don't make an opinion about something. Like th this, this piece is like the refusal of an opinion, right? I'm not going to say it's better. I'm not going to say it's worse. I'm not going to say I need it. I just say that I personally like it. That's that, that, Right. And I think in today's world, people like to hear opinions. They would rather hear an opinion from someone who likes X and then hear an opinion from someone who loves, lo loves Y and then try to come up with their best version of it. Or they usually just listen to one person and then they think it's the best. And then if you say anything on Twitter, they say you're an absolute ridiculous person. Have you ever built a real app? D DHH builds apps you couldn't even dream of. And so I, I, I'm more of the a fan of just like stating more of a like concrete, this is what I like and this is why I like it. And I, you know, as opposed to like not really leaving anything. It's really important to master tools that allow you to do large jobs yourself so that you can prototype efficiently. HMX is a much better solution for a prototype of an NBP than a massive freaking React thing plus a bunch of backend services. Yes, you can run quick to, to, to V0 or to V1. You can run to V1 super quick, and that's what I really like. The name is the HTMX-agen.